Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha, I'm Anya Carroll, a Hiki no student from Kalani High School in East Honolulu. And I'm Teo Fukamizu, a Hiki no student at Hongwanji Mission School in Nuuanu. Welcome to this special What I Learned edition of Hiki no, the nation's first statewide student news network. I'm sure you've all heard some version of the saying, the journey is more important than the destination. When it comes to students creating stories for Hiki no, that statement is very true. While viewers enjoy watching the final PBS Hawaii approved versions of these stories, they have little idea what the students went through to get their product ready to air. These student conceived, shot, written, and edited stories go through at least six versions before they are approved by the PBS Hawaii staff. In some cases, there have been as many as 20 drafts. Through this method of learning by redoing, we gain important skills that prepare us for the real world. Skills like teamwork, the ability to collaborate, critical thinking, and creative problem solving. To illustrate how this works, we will be presenting four Hikino stories, each followed by a short mini documentary about what the students learn from the experience of creating their story. Our first case study is something I was very proud to be a part of. Kalani High School story about an innovative made by students for students workspace. After the story, you'll find out that my partner and I learned a lot more than just how to shoot and edit video. In 2014, three high school students saw a need in the community. That's when the canvas was created. Located in Kalihi near Dillingham Boulevard, this learning conducive environment was made where students could come to after school to do homework and collaborate with their peers. Isabel Wong is the youngest of the three co-founders and current president of the Canvas. She is a junior in high school and is passionate about bringing students together. One of the main goals of the Canvas is to build this student community and so one of the things I want or I'm passionate about is seeing students, you know, regardless of their high school, regardless of where they come from, um, you know, where they are in their life, they're all able to come together, collaborate, work together, and be able to empathize with each other and hold discussions and really understand each other, not just as other people, but really as friends in one collective community. The Canvas is run by a team of eight student directors, including myself. We are basically in charge of doing everything, including events, day-to-day -day activities, and even budgeting. The Canvas was not only thought of by students, but also customized by teens from different high schools, such as Farrington, Kalani, and Punahou, who all came together to make the space uniquely theirs. This space started out kind of bare, you know, white walls, carpet uh, flooring, and when we talked to students, they were like, uh, I wouldn't really want to go there to do work. So one of the things we realized was we really needed to give the space a makeover. So we had this wood wall behind us was created by a high school student from Moana Lua. Uh, we painted all the walls, we ripped out the carpet, and we painted the floor. We painted the whiteboard walls and the chalkboard walls, and basically everything in this space um, that's uh, that we wanted to have in our space was created by students. The Canvas is a federally recognized nonprofit organization. Corporate and nonprofit sponsors, fundraising, and parental support all contribute to running the Canvas. One of the great things about the Canvas is it allows you to discover what it is you're passionate about. And so I'm still, you know, here and working to find what that is. So when I am ready to go and try something new, I know what that is. As for the Canvas, their future plans are to develop new programs and workshops that anyone can attend and continue helping students have an engaging workspace where they can make new friends and discover their life goals. If you'd like to learn more about the Canvas, you can go to thecanvashi.org or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Canvas HI. This is Anya Carroll from Kalani High School for Hiki No. I was the co-writer and co-editor in Kalani High School's story about the canvas. I was the co-writer and the co-editor on Kalani High School's story, The Canvas. The Canvas is supposed to be a nonprofit organization that gives students a place to come to after school. We came up with the idea because I'm on the canvas's team. 
I think it's really difficult to do a story on something that you're deeply involved in because you see it from the perspective of a person that already knows the backstory and already knows the background information. And so you automatically kind of assume that other people also know that same amount of information that you do and work on the story from that kind of a perspective. In the Hikino process of creating our video, The Canvas, when we first sent out our rough draft to Lurleen, our mentor, she gave us several comments to go back and fix it. When we first got feedback from Lurleen, it was actually considered Aaron's video. He was the one who was editing on it. But the more she gave us feedback, it kind of got frustrating because all of a sudden we were changing the entire focus of this video. But eventually, once I was able to take part and actually help with the editing, it got a lot easier and the comments were more um, positive, I guess. Working with Aaron was interesting. It was very interesting, but at the same time, I feel like it was very beneficial because we have a very different um, viewpoints on how to make the video. We were able to just correct each other, even on like the small details of the video, and benefit off of each other's different ways that we approached the video. They had arguments, they disagreed, but they came finally to a solution that they both could live with. And they're really close friends now. I'm so glad to see that. One of the major things that I learned about being on Hikino is really being able to persevere. Whatever obstacles you faced, it's always important that you keep trying and keep trying to make the best video that you want. I was a reporter and co-script writer on the following Hongganji Mission School story about our blind performing arts teacher, Laurie Rubin. Two of my classmates, Dashiell and Hunter, did the final editing, and I thought they did a great job. Here's a story, followed by a vignette about what Dashiell and Hunter learned from shaping the project into its final form. Fear is all about having control, and when you're not in control of it, that's when you're afraid. Some people think that the blind live a life of fear, but for Laurie Rubin, this is not the case. Laurie Rubin was born with Lieber's congenital amaurosis, a genetic disorder that affects the retina and causes loss of vision. People might think, oh, I'd be so terrified to take a step without being able to see, but I've never had time to think about it. It's just been my life. So it, I just kind of had this revelation that the, the fears that we do have come from, stem from that, stem from any time that we've had time to think about the unknown. Her inability to see hasn't stopped her from living an active life. Her schedule includes speaking at conferences, doing performances and singing, and being a vocal teacher. The only activity that I couldn't do, that my, my family said that I couldn't do, was ping pong. And I remember I was so mad at them. I was like, you can't tell me I can't do that. Because they had given me the self-esteem that I could do anything. So when they told me I couldn't do something, I just, I wasn't having it, you know. As a result of this self-esteem, she was able to accomplish many things. One of them being writing a memoir. So my book is called uh, Do You Dream in Color? Insights from a Girl Without Sight. And um, it's, it's really about my, it, it takes readers on a journey through my life because I realize one of the things that people want to know is they want to know how I do everyday stuff. Her book highlights her life experiences and what she went through to get to where she is now. Each chapter of her book talks about the different parts of her life and uses a different color for them. Despite her inability to see, she has interests that might surprise some people. I love making jewelry. I, I really enjoy playing around with makeup. Um, I love clothes because, you know, you can feel textures. And so, and I've always told people, I don't necessarily think that blindness is associated with vision per se. Like, I think if you have a visual, creative mind, uh, it will manifest itself no matter whether you're blind or sighted. Laurie Rubin has taken these words to heart. As a mezzo-soprano opera singer, her list of accomplishments include working with singer-songwriter Kenny Loggins and performing at the White House. She also co-created Peace on Your Wings, a musical based on the life of Sadako Sasaki, a girl who died from leukemia as a result of the Hiroshima atomic bomb. It's really amazing to see something that when you're in your pajamas at 3 in the morning just writing something down on a computer, 
how that can come to life on stage and and then more emotionally and seeing everybody get involved the students the parents the the audience um, other people who have investment in the story and and what I realized in that moment was that the reason I love this project so much more than anything else that we had done was because it was something that became a team effort because Laurie Rubin conquered her own fear she inspires others to be more fearless this is Teo Fukamizu from Hongwanji Mission School for Hikinao. In our story about the blind singer, I did part camera. I wrote some of the script and I edited. I did a lot of the camera work uh, for a lot of it, but I, most of it was just the editing. This year, my students for Hikino were all sixth graders, and um, it was a bit of a contrast from uh, previous, the previous year where I worked with eighth graders. Um, I, it was, I started from kind of like zero. They did not have any experience. We kind of knew our capabilities, and uh, we all got along. At some point, we were kind of playful and stuff like that, but it, it ended up like we all were serious about it. We all knew exactly what you're supposed to do. There were some challenges uh, just in terms of, you know, the sixth graders were a little bit more playful. Um, however, at the same time, they had a, a, this energy and I think they had no fear. They said, okay, we'll do it. Hey, why not? I think the interview turned out pretty good. The hardest part of it was picking out the best things that she said because she said a lot. Yeah. People might think, oh, I'd be so terrified to take a step without being able to see. How we got the story from our interview was we picked out a bunch of clips. We printed them, we cut them out. Then we chose the ones that we thought fit the most and that made the most sense. We kept on mixing them in an order until we thought it was good. And we had to change it a few times, but then we finally got it. I'm really happy, I'm really relieved that we did well. Well, when you guys finally say it's done, we're like, yes, yes. It's a really nice thing that we we just, we worked really hard and now it's finally paid off and it's really satisfying. It teaches me um, that um, my students can do quite a lot. Um, and I don't necessarily have to always tell them what to do. I can take a step back and then let them take ownership and see what they do. Hikino projects are almost always team efforts, but on some rare occasions, a student takes on a Hikino story all on his or her own. Such was the case with a student from Kauai High School. Here's her solo flight story, followed by a What I Learned vignette about the skills she gained from having to do everything herself. Mr. Seth Peterson didn't always dream of having his own food truck. My background is biology and chemistry. That's what I went to school for. And I moved to Kauai and I started farming and I developed an interest in food from there. A desire to own his own business led him to the kitchen. I had no interest in cooking before. The first time I've ever cooked in the kitchen is on that food truck. The science behind it is what I love. Mr. Peterson used his love of science and good food to develop Kickshaw's unique flavors. My food truck is gourmet diner food is what we call it. Um, Everything we do is made from scratch and takes a long time to prepare. The burger that we do is 20 hours. It's a salting process, curing process. So we do a lot of things like that, which among other food trucks is unheard of and uh, not many restaurants take that much time. It's usually all about the dollar. We, we, we are all about the ingredients and having fun doing it. For the Petersons, it's also about running the business as a family. Customer service industry is interesting. The experience of it though, I just love it. I'm able to work with my wife, our babies with us every day too. We've just had, we have a one year old and to be able to work and be with the kid is just awesome. Mr. Peterson says his newfound passion for cooking helped him create the recipe to success. 
If you're in it for the money, it's probably not going to work out for you. Um, and you need a product that's truly unique to be successful because anybody can go get a taco at any of the food trucks around. But if you have something truly unique, you're going to be very successful at it. Kickshaw's Traveling Kitchen proves that success is a journey, not a destination. And I love it. This is Liana Theskin from Kauai High for Hikino. For the Kauai High School story, it was called The Food Truck Owner. And I was the editor, producer, director, and filmer. It was a solo project. And what I see as her learning the most is maybe balancing time. A little more thought in uh, the pre-production and planning because she did everything herself. The challenges of doing this story all by myself was it was a lot of back and forth. For instance, I had to set up the camera myself for the interview, and I would have to check in to make sure the audio is okay. But working by myself, I definitely had to have a complete open mind and really channel my inner creativity to really get the story out. With the Hiki No mentoring process, I was given feedback and comments regarding my story and how I could improve upon it. The feedback I got from Terry was to focus my story more about the food truck itself, and that's what helped me change my story. For a lot of students, oftentimes they don't take the feedback well, you know, because they have this attitude that, okay, I'm done with it, I've turned it in. But as for Liana, she has a really good attitude. I thought of it as an opportunity to improve. At first it was a little tedious because I would have to change my writing style and kind of get out of the comfort zone and try something new. But in the end, it was all worth it. Do you understand what she's saying? Yeah, so I use two different mics, one for the interview and one for B-roll. So there's two different sounds. Once the story clicks, there's still a lot of details and fine tuning that needs to be done. And they're all little things, but in the end, they all add up to make a great story. You know, there's a reason for learning more and improving on the quality of what they produce because it is for an actual audience. It's not just something that gets written down on paper and turned in and that's about it. You know, it's not. It, it takes the measurement of their learning to a much higher level. Some Hikinel stories are drawn from the life of one of the students on the production team. Because the telling of a personal story can be a very emotional experience, it's handy to also have people on the team who are not personally linked to the story. They can lend some objectivity to the process and deal with aspects of the production that are too close for comfort for the storyteller. Here's one such personal point of view piece from Waianae High School, followed by what the students learned from the experience. Philippians. I've read the Bible probably seven times, cover to cover, so I'm a student of the Word of God. I mean, look where I think it is. My hobbies are gardening, cleaning up, raking leaves. I planted all these plants too. Everything here, I put all these cement cinder blocks in. You know, I, I'm this guy who's always worked. I painted all this too. Started to paint the house, I haven't finished yet. I used to box, I used to do martial arts, I know how to fight. I think because my job was so high paced before, you know, like uh, Navy chief, get the job done, lead, lead. And then uh, I had the motorcycle accident, lost my leg, back ache, neck ache, stump ache. So dealing with the chronic pain and just trying to do anything I can because if I just sit here alone in my room, I get very depressed. But I got one leg, lots of pain, and uh, what do I do? Do I complain about it all day? Oh, that gets old. 
hearing myself complain. I'm sick of that. What else can I do? I can give up. I know that whenever the fiery darts come about like, oh, I wish I was never born, crap like that, uh, they don't last long. There's something inside me that says, I'm gonna fight today. You don't have it that bad, and so I tell myself that. Robert, you don't have it that bad. I just wish I had the enemy in front of me right now. I would just beat the crap out of him, but I can't do that, right? What's the enemy? I don't know, what's the enemy? I'm gonna take this guy down, man. I'm married, I got four kids. There's laundry that needs to get done. I can do it, I'm a strong guy. I got upper body strength, you know. I push myself around the wheelchair. There you go. I'm just gonna keep getting up and going to work, I guess. Not, I mean, not to a job that will pay me money. You gotta deal with it. You gotta find something inside of you. And then you got other scripture that talks about whatever things are kind, whatever things are loving, whatever things are of a good report. Think on these things. And the God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. I don't feel left out or special. I don't feel abandoned. And uh, when I feel good, I'm gonna go to Costco and buy groceries. Those are the goals. This is Melina Marquez from Waianae High School with a story about my father, for he Kino. The story Living With Pain was about my dad. He lost his leg in a motorcycle accident a few years back, and I guess he's just talking about what he does on a day-to-day -day basis and how he dealt with his, the pain and living with it. The first shoot day, I had the camera. I shot the interview, did a lot of B-roll, and Melina interviewed her dad. When he was talking, I was kind of amazed. I just saw him as, a, I guess, someone to look up to because not a lot of people go through that kind of uh, hard times. So Shana um, transcribed it, and then together we just looked at like what hit us, I guess, like powerful sound bites, and we just highlighted it, grabbed it, and pulled it down, and then we just tried to arrange them in some kind of way that it told a story. I was really thankful that she did this, all the transcribing because the thought of having to go back and like look at what he, all he, that he talked about kind of made me uncomfortable. So I was really glad that I had someone that could, I guess, help me do that type of um, journey. I knew that Melina was going to be uh, emotional and I would be too because her dad is telling his story of what happened that changed all their lives. I was glad to have helped her through this time because um, I would need someone there for me if the roles were reversed. I think doing this story um, changed my relationship with my dad because ever since, like, right after um, I did the story, I just felt like I was able to talk to him just about anything. And I would just come and talk to him sometimes and then, like, it would just feel normal, I guess. A little more normal than how it used to before that. I think Melina needed to get this story done because she wanted to show other people that the hard times aren't going to last forever and that I think she just wanted to get her story and her father's story out there. We hope you've enjoyed watching these Hiki No What I Learned case studies as much as we've enjoyed presenting them to you. They're living proof that, when it comes to Hiki no, the journey is every bit as important as the destination. We leave you now with a What I Learned vignette from Volcano School of Arts and Sciences on Hawaii Island. It reveals how a student learned through her Hiki no experience that she really enjoys teaching her peers. Until next time, ahui ho kako! In the story of Dina Kegler, I was the editor 
and producer. <laughs> just I, I basically helped with all of the fields. We basically wanted to give some recognition to the people that were involved in this school because the school can do many great things because of the science curriculum and the art curriculum. When we went to the lava from the video and I was like literally this close from it, it was like burning hot. And usually kids from other schools won't be able to do this because they don't live near like literally a mile away from like an active volcano and they won't get this opportunity because they're like far away. Well, I think the purpose of having Hikino is to tell those stories because not everybody can be everywhere at once, right? And these experiences do matter because they're impacting kids on their lives. They're showing the kids what they can do. I just thought it was extraordinary how this one thing just turn into some completely something else and knowing that you did that and and your team did that it's just amazing knowing like we did that to see it progress was like a child being born like your baby becoming like a teenager becoming 18 well i'm older than most of my teammates and um, peers so I kind of let them depend on me. And I like that because I can teach them. I think Jade, who happens to be my daughter, exhibited personal growth and her ability to guide others and the enjoyment that she found from that was something really incredible for me to see. I can show them what jump cuts are or how to duck and just transitions and just basically how to tell a story properly. <laughs> it has been truly empowering for everyone involved. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo. And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.